five, four, three, two, one, roll 16. Good evening, I'm Ray Blush of Project 13. We've looked at the problems and accomplishments of other people for several years, so now we thought we'd take a look at ourselves for a change. To help you better understand how this complex system of people and equipment works, we'll explore our house tonight on Project 13. And we'll be back in just a minute. What we have today in this highly sophisticated world of television technology is an outgrowth of actually some 90 years of thinking. Back then, though, television was nothing more than an interesting curiosity. Today, 97% of the homes in the United States have at least one TV set. We in the Tampa Bay area make up the 17th largest television market in the country, and we've got seven television stations transmitting signals into the air. Most of what goes out on the air these days is pre-recorded except for informational programs such as news, sports, and weather. Because of the current nature of those programs, they normally are broadcast live and updated as required. Television station studios can be altered just like the stage in a theater to take on the appearance of almost anything you'd like. Utilizing all sizes and descriptions of props, camera angles, and lighting techniques, the final result of television programs or commercials can whisk you to all four corners of the world. But everything inside a TV station doesn't look like one might envision it. It's a business and has business offices, clerks, and secretaries. Yet everyone works toward a common goal, and that goal, the dissemination of information and WTBT, entertainment on time. Of course, television stations are regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, but most, not all, most have voluntarily adopted their own set of standards more stringent than what the government demands. Those who have voluntarily adopted the concept of self-regulation subscribe to the National Association of Broadcasters Code, and Channel 13 is one of them. We're one of five television stations and three radio stations in the Gaylord Broadcasting Company. The president of that company, as well as being general manager of WTVT, is Eugene B. Dodson. And so the content of commercials and programming is checked before airing. What about the audio level of those commercials? Some people insist commercials are louder than adjacent programs. Our chief engineer here is Frank Rankel. And as we stood among a million dollars worth of videotape equipment, he explained why those commercials may seem louder. Uh, the sound of the commercial, I'd say about 80% of the time, will be a little bit higher than the adjacent program because the adjacent program material normally is lower. It's like you and I standing here talking. We're talking at a normal level. Now, we're peaked at, or probably our average peaks around about 50 or 60%. When commercials come in, they're usually peaked at 100%. They're done under, under ideal conditions. and So the overall effect might be louder, but they're really not any louder. We set a zero level here early in the morning when we first uh, check the station out and sign it on the air. And through our system, we have what we call a, an Automax here at the studio end, and at the transmitter end, we have a volume X, and we also go through what we call a loudness controller. All of this is done electronically. This to, is all to regulate the all sound. All to regulate the sound to keep it down to what we call a zero level, optimum level, certainly not loud. Uh, plus, we have no less than two engineers on duty at all times when we're running film commercials or videotape commercials. When we're in, let's say, like the Pulse Block or we're into a live show, we have three, you know, what we call audio engineers, doing nothing but making sure that the audio is at the proper level. So there really isn't any way that it can be louder. Members of the production and engineering departments are beginning to create a set, a set which will be used in the making of a commercial. And of course, when you talk about commercials, you're talking about station revenue. And when you talk about station revenue, you bring in sales personnel into the fold. Larry Whitney, general sales manager at WTVT. You've seen advertising, the approach of advertising, change considerably in your time. Uh, lately, we seem to see more of a commercial indicating that one brand, perhaps, is better than another name brand. And they're actually naming brands. Do advertisers think this is more effective? Yes, I think they do. Like most advertising, Ray, the, uh, 
the whole end of it is results, if it works. Uh, bad advertising doesn't sell, and if bad advertising doesn't sell the products, then we don't see it on the air. Evidently, this new trend of compare product to product is working for those that use it, and therefore we have quite a bit of it on the air. To air a 30-second commercial on Channel 13 would cost you between $30 and $1,400, depending on what time and day you wanted it televised and the number of viewers watching. To produce that same 30-second commercial using the indoor production studio, you'd pay somewhere between $120 and $5,000, depending on how elaborate you wanted to get. But not all television commercials are done inside a television studio. You may have noticed over the past few years that more commercials are being done in the great outdoors, taking the television studio to the outdoors and using that as a studio. Well, Channel 13, like many other television stations across the land, is doing the same thing. Here at Channel 13, we have two mobile television stations, really. This being one of the two, the small production center. That's what's causing all the racket. It's powered by its own generators and therefore does not need any type of umbilical cord attaching it to a power source or any other part of the television station. Of course, it's a bit more expensive doing it with the portable television station on wheels, the remote unit. It costs anywhere from old $400 to four to $5,000 to produce just a 30-second commercial. And then, of course, you have to purchase airtime so that you can put that commercial message onto the television stations. John Hoekstrom, one of the veteran producer-directors at WTVT. John, you've done a lot of commercials. What does it take when you're out in the field or when you're in the studio to coordinate all of the employees, the staff members in the production department, engineering department, takes to get guts. that message done? It takes a lot of guts. Uh, you've got 20 people working together, and you've got 20 highly creative people, and uh, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of money riding on it. You have a lot of, uh, a lot of agency money riding on it, people making commercials that cost $30,000 or more or less. And uh, their product is just as important as uh, the guy that you did yesterday or the guy you're going to do tomorrow. Uh, and you've got to give him the best job. You've got to get the best work out of all your cameramen, your engineers, and you've got to give it your best shot, too. In a moment, we'll look at one part of an operation in our house few people seldom think about. The rest of the news programs involve the concerted efforts of several dozen people just in the preparatory stages. Reporters spend the entire day covering newsworthy events, scripting their stories while their film is being processed. Communication among those playing a role in the assembly process of Pulse must be constant to ensure a professional presentation. And even while the program is on the air, others are making final adjustments to their stories. The Weather Service Department is updating its information from all over the United States and parts of the world. And the Sports Department is gathering the most current statistics for its presentation. And when it's over, precisely on time, the flow of adrenaline slows. For now from CBS. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. We've interviewed a lot of people on Project 13. Tonight we interview the boss, uh, not only the executive producer of Project 13, but news director Hugh Smith. Hugh, you hit Cronkite on time. That's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, it, it takes a good sense of timing, but we've got a lot of help from the director's booth, from the people on the floor who give us cues, and uh, that's how we do it. Personally, I'd rather be asking the questions than answering them. Okay. Walter doesn't wait for you to cue him. He's there, and you've got to get to him just before he opens his mouth, right? Right. He comes on uh, straight up at 7 o'clock. He doesn't wait. The only time that I can recall that we were ever late going into him was on Salty Saul's 45th anniversary when we borrowed some time from Walter. Walter didn't know that, but uh, we did it. Okay. Hugh, in a more serious reign, uh, the Pulse News is the highest rated news program in the Tampa Bay area. It takes a lot to get there. Uh, exactly what does it take to have a top rated news program on top of the news all the time? Ray well, takes the work of a lot of people, as you're well aware, in doing Project 13. Uh, it, it takes a lot of people, it takes good people, it takes a commitment to television journalism, it takes uh, a management which believes in news and public affairs programming and is willing to make the investment in people, willing to make the investment in equipment, and we're lucky at Channel 13 that we have all those things going for us. In support of that, Channel 13 pioneered the use of electronic news gathering, or ENG, in the Tampa Bay area. Through the use of a specially designed van with highly sophisticated equipment, reporters are able to broadcast their stories live from the scene if those stories dictate such attention. 
That ENG signal is beamed from the truck microwave sender to a receiver at the station. Then it's brought into the building. From there, it takes the path of all pictures and sounds going from our house to yours. After leaving control panels, the signal is microwaved from the Channel 13 studios on Kennedy Boulevard to our transmitter, located 19 miles away near the Riverview Balm area. There, the signal is reflected down to a receiving dish, into the transmitter building on what looks like a piece of pipe called a waveguide and into a receiver. A transmitter engineer monitors the sound and picture, checking for any possible deterioration along the way. Then it comes back out on a transmission line, up the transmitting tower some 1,500 feet into the air, into an antenna, and then radiated into space. All this, by the way, is instantaneous, and you receive the picture the same time we send it. There's much more we'd like to be able to show you about our house, but we're running out of time. Things such as the hours management personnel spend screening and deliberating over the planned airing of a controversial network program. Or the technological marvels disguised as wires, circuits, tubes, transistors, and switches. The impact on the community because of public service programming. Awareness of future programs or changes because of the heavy involvement of the promotion department in disseminating station information, and more. Before we go, we'd like to show you one more thing. On many commercials on television, you've seen products enlarged considerably in comparison with the size of the individual telling you about those products. Well, the same thing here. It's called the art of chroma keying. Actually, this is the camera Jewel McGee used to film most of tonight's Project 13. Quite obviously, the camera cannot be that large in comparison with me or Jewel just couldn't have carried it. Well, it's superimposed over my background because through the marvel of electronics in television, what is actually behind me just disappears. Now, to give you an idea, director Jim Benedict can get rid of that camera, just like that. And if he wanted to go a step farther, he could get rid of me. But in reality, I'm sitting in front of a blue flat on a blue box. And when it's all put together, the camera from one camera, me from another camera, and the electronics genius getting rid of the blue colors, that's the effect you get. Well, we hope you've learned a little bit about the operation of a television station during tonight's Project 13. We certainly did. For Project 13, I'm Ray Blush. Good night.